Bradley Climate Change Committee. Welcome everybody. Uh, when we go around, we're going to be and say names. Kathy Nelson. Jack Zakowski. Stephen Devine. Carol Costa. Susan Melton. Uh, Thomas Phil. Michael Doctor. Jane Nevin Smith. Kelly McKinn. Susie Moser. Alex Marsh. Hi. <laughs> Good to see you. All right. Um, so we'll start off with a little bit about our volunteer day gardener supply. Go ahead. All right. We'll so it was a few weeks ago that um, Kathy and I joined in over gardener supply. They were collecting um, extra plastic planting containers and they got thousands. It was amazing. Well, they're done with. Yes. Like you buy a plant, you don't want the container anymore, oh, yeah. bring it back. Yeah, it's a lot. So there were people with one or two containers, there were people with a hundred containers and we were doing our best to sort them out. And types two and five yeah. are able to be recycled. Um, it was a great hit. Last year was the first year that they had ever done this uh, and it went well, but they knew they had to get better organized. So they put out a call to our committee for a little bit of help. And it was just incredible seeing people coming through. Um, you know, it wasn't the best day. Right, it was raining. Yeah. Trunk fulls of them though. Uh, that's great. Yeah. That's really great. Have we done any publicity about it? Well, I didn't even know about it until Jack let me know about it. And I said, sure, I'll sign up. So the woman who was in charge, Alex. the Alex. Hadley, no. Hadley Garden right. Supply employee that was in charge, I gave her my no, email right. and said, you know, let me know next year when we're going to have this and I'll get it up on the town website. Let our residents know. So this happened tail end of June. Yeah. But it was a hit, and it's been interesting because there have been a number of these different events. At Firestone, they had a big day when they did the tire recycling. And then right next to them, I think, was Staples. Uh, no, could have been East Campus Savings. Doing the, were, the churning. The yeah, they were shredding. doing the paper shredding. That was another big day. And then this container day was also a big hit and they're planning on doing it as an annual sort of end of June event. This is great. And so it's something that we can um, tag along with and help them out. Uh, so everybody knows, please, it's important um, paperwork for the town. Um, make sure that if you haven't gone to the town hall, go to the town hall. Um, Jennifer Sanders James, um, is organizing everything just so our lists of who's on what committee in town are better. Uh, the select board appreciates that. And up to date. So the ceremony, the swearing in takes all of two minutes. So, so we have to go by and get sworn in. I'll get you did it. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if she would do it over the phone. No. 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 It yeah. has to, to be do done it in person. And is it? Jennifer or Jessica that swears? Um, it's Jessica that actually does it, but Jennifer is compiling the, all the lists. Yeah. So, okay. there we go. Okay. All right. um, and um, I think we will have one more meeting where we'll be videotaped and we can kind of watch the process. So, um, the, here's that. So, we extended the date to September 15th. Um, and since uh, we, since uh, Russell School Committee has been disbanded by the select board, we are going to do individual appointments instead okay. of a workshop. Right. So it will be outside of the meeting. Um, so if there's anyone on your list who's interested, they will reach out to me. I have business cards on me. If anyone needs one, just email me and we'll set up a time and date to do a quick training. Okay. Um, do you have some extra business cards? So we have members on both sides. Alex. Yep. And then we can figure this out on um, who's available, who's interested. I 
it's like the slowest game of poker. Thank you, Alex, and thanks for all your help with videotaping. I didn't know that this was a thing and popular until a couple of months ago. There was mm -hmm. someone who said, I was watching your last meeting. Yeah. Oh, okay. really interested and engaged. That's fair. That's a good thing. Good. All right. So speaking of good news, uh, we have heard back from um, Joanne in Boston. Uh, we are in. Hadley has been accepted for a hundred, I think it's going to be a $130,000 grant. To be a green community. To be a green community for 2022. That's how they're doing our application. So later this summer or early fall, they will try to get together with the powers in town and figure out a time where they can celebrate this. There's a number of other communities, including some others in Western Mass, maybe East Long Meadow. South Hadley more likely. They were one of the ones that wasn't in yet. South Hadley's not Hadley. in. I don't know if they were in this round. Altogether, there's 351 cities and towns in Massachusetts. There's about 300 that are green communities and now Hadley joins the list. That's great. So there's about 50 more to do it. Here's what they ask as this goes out on the on YouTube. Um, they're asking for us not to spread the word too much because mm -hmm. they want sort of a bigger event around this. So just you don't have to tell all your neighbors not yet, but um, as soon as we hear back, we'll We'll find out more of the details and what this will look like. So, yay, this is yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations, Congratulations on your work. Yeah, thank you. Well, it was a team effort for sure, um, but it's great to get that money. It's great that this money will be going mostly to the schools for some new equipment. So it's going to be for heat pumps and other things. However, it's decided um, everything's in the, the plan. And now we can actually apply for more grants. Prior to this time, we were blocked from applying for any green communities grant. And, and what, what makes that green community? Oh boy, there's five criteria. Uh, there's a couple of zoning and planning board criteria. There is an evaluation of all the town buildings. So not all the private buildings, but all the town yeah. buildings. I don't know. 30 town buildings, including a lot of pump stations. Yeah, a lot of pump stations and things you didn't even know the town owned Do you get into this. Yeah. So those were all analyzed and what they found were the areas with greatest need. And that's what they made suggestions of how this first round of grant money should be spent improving that. Um, in addition, there's also, um, there was also something with building code. There's a, a more new, more updated building code that we're not part of, but about two and a half, three years ago, we voted um, on Hadley to have a better building code. Uh, stretch code. Stretch code. Yeah. Yeah, town meeting voted that. So it means that when builders are building new buildings, uh, they need to recommend better insulation, for examples. Uh, they might need to... Uh, put in spray insulation around outlet boxes. Yeah. Places where people lose energy, mm -hmm. they're trying to stop the loss. Um, Makes buildings more energy. Yeah, and then- Yeah, it, our places are so tight. Yeah. Our houses are so tight over there. And it's kind of dry. It's like spray insulation everywhere. Well, and it's a good thing, yeah. especially with oil prices yeah. and everything else being so expensive. And then the last thing they're involved with um, are vehicles in town. Hi, Catalina. Welcome. So, recommending... Well, so, we to agree to... So, everybody in the everybody in the school committee mm -hmm. and everybody, like the fire department, the police yeah. department, agree that as they look forward to new vehicles, they'll consider hybrid vehicles, for sure. And, and the police are hybrid, hybrid, doing hybrid. Hybrid, not electric. So, sort of the crossover. Yep. 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 But, yeah, lucky us to get that grant. So that's that's great news. Not lucky us, hardworking yet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we totally, and the state wants it. I mean, they're very, they were very helpful to us. And yeah. it's a great program because they're literally paying us to do these building retrofits that will make town and school buildings 
way more energy efficient. So and therefore ultimately save money. Yeah. So, so it's that's the whole it's good. It's good for the town. Absolutely. All right. And that brings us to composting grant. Mm -hmm. yeah, perfect, perfect time. time. Timing. Timing. Fling. <laughs> Um, so with the compost, uh, we, we were, we had a grant from the Hadley Cultural Council and from the Amherst Cultural Council. Um, we are going to uh, create, uh, 500 postcards, um, with a beautiful, beautiful, uh, pictures from, uh, from local, uh, local artists as photographers of Hadley. We have a lot of pictures of Hadley and with a banner that is said, compost it, like post it, compost it, and with a square, that some of you don't know how to use it, but some of you <laughs> It's a modern way to just like there and immediately you get go to the to the our website that said exactly ideas how to compose, uh, uh, direction how to compose. So lots of videos, no, well, not lots, but several. But at least like I said, like, and the message is uh, the most important is that composing is the easiest, the one of the easiest steps to um, fight climate change, avoid um, the gases. And um, that is like with a, with a quote from the Washington Post and one from the Nature Magazine, also saying that, that it, it, uh, when you put the, the uh, food into compost, you save like 30% or something of gases. So, so it's, it's very striking. Um, uh, knowledge for people to like, this is something that I can do. Very simple. So, uh, and we're going to put a big banner in with the same thing in the um, transfer station, say like inviting people to compost. And with a little thing also like a um, sign in front of the, of the compost bar, uh, bucket, like container, then to, again, same thing, like uh, 500 people will know that we can compost in Hadley, and also there is ways to compost them. So already the, the design is ready. Uh, the only thing that we need to uh, um, decide in the committee is um, um one one suggested uh, so someone suggested to put the name of not of the square but also the link Hadley uh, climate change page. Um, so the people, webs the webs are all but it's like a, like so long. So they suggest to reduce it. So we can reduce it, but it's like a bitly two, three, four, five, seven, or something like that. So we have to decide if we use the whole long name or the little one. The whole name, like it's very clear, has the climate change committee. So it's like more, you know, meaningful that the other bitly is kind of like making a you know, like I think it's important to have it say Hadley climate change so people know where it's coming from. Thank you, yes. Yeah, so there you are. Thank you. <laughs> and we will have a, 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 a logo to say the Massachusetts Cultural Council give us the money. So with that is just to send it this, we can send it this week, tomorrow, and then we will have 500 postcards um, that we will uh, put all over the town. Yes, Susan. How do you decide who gets the 500 postcards? Oh, that's we will put in the library, senior center, uh, uh, post office, the town, the schools, ah. um, every place that uh, if I will ask everybody, like we will have a bunch here and everybody can like, if you have a farm, if you can put it in your farm stand, you know, in public any place, places. public places that we can put. Yeah. And is there, so if it's very successful, if you run out of post uh, postcard, we just can reprint them and, um, is this set, Catalina, with all the pictures, so there's no issue with copyright? All the pictures accepted by, by even proud, donated by the artist, yes. Great. But just out of curiosity, are they identified? By yes. Yes. yes, 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 it's uh, like a uh, wrong color, but it doesn't say from which part of the town they no, took the picture. No, no, but, but took yes, the, yeah, it's like an artist, like a beautiful picture, and the, like a little name, name on the of, the, of the artist. Yes. Question: What what's the size of the postcard? Uh, it's going to be this size. It by eleven. Yes, this no, is. no half. Okay. Yes. Hi. Thank you. Right. What about the banner? Here's the banner. The banner. Uh, we. I. I like. I remember. It's like a. 
four feet by nine feet. Oh, no. It's going to be a big, big mine. And with very beautiful So will that go on the fence of the yeah. transfer station? Right. Yeah. Plus the, the sign that it will look right. And we are going to do three in case that one breaks. So then we will have one right in front of the bucket where people can uh, do their compose. And that's it. That's it. Sounds good. So, project. Marion, hi, welcome. Oh, I'm um, just doing introductions so um, everybody knows everybody else who's here. If you didn't know how they have the transfer station, they actually have a composting bin. They do. Yeah, that, you see, like, can you wait, pick up the compost there? No, no, no. It's to bring your food waste. Okay. So you can, if you have food scraps. Yes. It's also awesome in a bucket when you go. And we do one, we do one compost yeah. at our house. Yeah. Um, but so who runs it? So with solid waste solutions, who, turn, you know, who turns the it's, bucket? It's the same group that uh, that manages our transfer station. No, it goes to Martin's Farm in Greenfield. That's what you're, where the compost. Oh, okay. is. I, so yeah, the yeah. compost goes away. Yes. yes. Oh, okay. It, yeah. we have it's a not drop. available to the people who. Look, no, there's no compost. To, we keep calling it compost, but really, it's a food scrap collection dumpster oh. at the transfer station. Oh, yes. It keeps things out of the landfill right. for a while. Okay. Exactly. Well, yeah, I think they have a regular rotation. Maybe it's every two weeks. I'm not sure exactly yeah, it's the not, turnaround yeah. time. Uh, who is it? Uh, and is it all food scraps? Yes. Oh, it, even they we can put uh, paper. Paper. Paper, pizza, compostable. Yeah. Anything that's compostable can yes. go in there. But I'm talking about like not proteins. No. 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 Oh, but fish, yes. We got fish and eggs, yes, but not meat, no. but red meat and all that. No, you know, bones, bones meat. Yeah, yeah, right. Yes. Or bones. Yeah. So that's that's, that's, that's yeah. So we hopefully we'll have it next. Maybe next month we'll have it to give it to everybody and oh, good. please help to pass it around. Yes. And Martin's Farm, if you uh, if you've ever been up there, oh yeah, it's an amazing place. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and Marion, I think you had gotten the word, I'm pretty sure, about us getting the green yes, grant. Yes, So Congratulations for all your work. It's definitely, so, that, well. And you, and everybody. And everybody, so that was good. Yes. yes. Um, so let's keep moving on. Um, next month, it's likely we'll have Chris, Chris Curtis, who does a similar committee to this. Yeah, but he's out of Deerfield, so he's checking his schedule to see if he can join us in August. Um, you know, over the last few months, we've had a number of guest speakers. We have Mindy Dom, we had Mara Shulman come in. Mindy Dom spoke about education initiative around mm -hmm. climate change. Mara Shulman talked about some of her work as a sort of a lawyer in Northampton and what she's trying to do. Some of these things are being debated at the State House um, over these last few weeks. Um, but I know that there are some other issues that people have been talking about that are important for this committee to address. And now is the time. Mm -hmm. This is a good time, especially, you know, last year we were getting ready to start cutting tobacco and it was the start of a drought and that drought kept going for 60 days and it was just miserable. It was awful. This year, it's the start of a flood. Again, in some places in towns, in town like Meadow Street and uh, Aqua Vita Road are flooded. Between the two years, the weather is going to be absolutely average. Yeah. Between the two years, farmers really took a lot of loans. Because last year was way too dry, and this year is way too wet. Yeah. Susie, I know there was one thing you had mentioned. Well, it it just feels to me like we're way behind the eight ball in preparing the town more generally for how to deal with the impacts. I mean, it's, you know, I, I think it's absolutely great that we got the green communities and we get to do something on the mitigation side. On the front end of the problem, but I just feel like we, you know, and it's not just the dike, even though that's that's a huge issue. But how do we deal with the heat? You know, what are our our um, ways of addressing the impacts on agriculture? On you know, when it's flooding on the whole town, on the infrastructure. I just feel like 
you know, we don't have a comprehensive plan and we ought to have one. I think we need to engage the community in having the conversations about what is needed, what are the priorities. So to me, you know, it feel, feels to me like there's an educational component, but there's also a real planning component um, that this becomes just integrated into everything that we do. Um, so I, I don't know, you know, where we want to start with this, but I just feel like it's important um, to maybe think through some of the grants that we can get um, from the state now um, to deal with with the adaptation side, with the resilience building side. So we have a lot of expertise in this room. Um, I'm wondering, is like, are you with the select board and other people? Are you talking about these concerns? How, how no, but we can... should be. And I, I, when Susie was talking, I was thinking what we really should have is a speaker here that we can help educate, and that's Mike Spagnable, who's our emergency management organizer. Or, chair whatever he is he's that's his title do you Emergency. think he has ideas about well, what to do or well maybe he needs to some help thinking about what okay. to do and this may be a good source for us to start the conversation and mike what can we do to help you how can we get you more information what can we we know you're busy fine but this is coming on us and we want to help yeah. this is our job that is such an important next step I was talking to my brother just before coming to this meeting and we were figuring out our plan for cutting tobacco in about 10 days, um, unless we lose it tonight or lose it tomorrow yeah. because yeah, of the weather. Supposed to so rain all it's really a high stakes gamble, all these tobacco farmers especially, but you know, the carrot farmers, the corn farmers, the organic Any farmers, farmers, farmers Any, or, any, any farmer. Yeah. Stone, far, stone soup farm lost almost everything. That's my CSA. They they just you know have most of their fields um, behind the Phelps house, whatever, and eight out of ten acres are in the multiple feet of water. So they lost everything. We were wondering who was renting that this year. Yep. Um, Last year they were in great shape because they were actually having access to the water mm -hmm. because they were so close to the river. This year, they lost yeah, everything. This year, it's I like, think. Uh, we're not going to see the kind of rain they had in Vermont very often, nine inches over a period of a couple hours, number one. And number well, two, wait, I what, think, why do you think that? Because that doesn't happen all the time. Yeah, but what about the rain we've got here? Well, so you're getting all Vermont's water enough. right now. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> it isn't anything we had, but it's coming this way. Yeah. And I think there's 13 dams that should work together. I don't know if they are. Some of this is certainly a regional issue you know in, ter in terms of what's happening upstream affects what mm -hmm. happens here yeah, and, and so i totally get that but i also feel we can't ignore the fact that these extremes are becoming more frequent so even though they should be so-called hundred year events you know that just means every year there's a one percent chance but that's it's just that's that changing 1988 we had floods that were worse than that today right. 1988 north street was closed west street was closed well, you know, just because but one they, they storm the was worse than another, they weren't it doesn't in the middle need of the summer, and that makes a big difference to agriculture. Oh. Huge difference. It was in one in oh, fall. I don't know, but it didn't. No, I think it was in May. I, I think, think that, it was very that, early on because I know we were I think it was in May. hauling yeah. fish that had swum up onto our Sarzinski field, and they just died because yeah. they were landlocked, but it was very early in the year where sometimes you might even have an option to replant, mm -hmm. although usually not. But it's, you know, floods one year, droughts the next mm -hmm. year, extreme heat, air pollution like crazy. I mean, what we had, you know, when, I mean, I have asthma, so walking around it, I, I was locked inside for days when the all the smoke from Canada came down. So it's not our problem, right? It's not burning right here, and yet it's our problem. So what are we doing? Besides but just, you know, I, I, had, I talked to a lot of farmers the last few days and there's like, to me, there's like here two different ways of reacting to it. One, one set of farmers says who lost everything in East Hampton said, should I have planted there? What was it? Did, did I make a mistake by planting in that field that I knew had a chance of going under? Yeah. Oh. Should I put a less value? And then there's another set of farmers that are that are 
trying to say that it was the dam operator's fault. Oh. Huh. And, you know, if you look at the dams, nobody was operating those dams. The water just, you can't even see the goddamn the Holyoke Dam because it's right. just like a little bump in the river. Yeah. <laughs> so there was just a lot of rain. And, and, in, and in fact, if you watch the water level, it went up and they managed it at 114 or whatever it was. And they, they did that. They seemed to have been, it was, it was pretty damn controlled. It's, it's flat for the next three or four days, right at that level. Yeah. So somebody's doing all they can. The problem is that once the, once the water, you get so much more water in those reservoirs and you can't see the dam anymore, there's not a whole shit ton you can do. Well, that's what that engineer that came mm -hmm. to talk to us yeah. said that, Dam management, when you get enough rain, it doesn't make any difference. No. It's just going to pour. And then it's a question of how do you rebuild, right? I mean, yes, there is the option of, like, planting somewhere else if you have that option. Some farmers don't have that option, yeah. right? And the same as we, with rebuilding. I mean, you know, Vermont is struggling with that right now. Should we rebuild in the same place? Every impulse, every human impulse is, oh, let's get it right back to normal. Mm -hmm. Like what we had, yeah. you know, Sunday. Well... Is that not stupid, right? In terms of we know that flooding is getting bigger. So it's that kind of thinking of like, what do we do before something happens? What do we do when something happens? And what do we do after? And that's the kind of thinking I would love for us to get, you know, the town involved, have the make the plan. The lead story on the national news every day this week has been the weather and climate related issues. Okay. It's just there. And now some people might be saying, oh, you know, they want the fashion to flash and dazzle. They want the landslide off of Okemo Mountain, which was pretty amazing. Anybody who's ever been the up rocks. there. It was all the rocks and everything else. And, you know, Springfield, Vermont and Claremont, New Hampshire and that whole area. It's constantly in the news. And the seven hottest days in the last few hundred years that have ever been measured have been not just in the last July. 100 years the hottest day on earth in the last 130,000 years happened in early July so I know some people are it's an aberration it's a heat wave it's just it'll get better next week or the week after but there's a real trend line where things are really warming up and you know if you if you think about what thermal mass is when something gets warm and it weighs a lot it stays hot a long time. And the ocean. What we're talking about is all of the ground, all of the mass, all of it is getting warmer. And there's no backing up when that happens. There's no like, oh, we, let's do things a little differently now. So my wife's son and I just spent um, the last 10 days in Alaska. And we had a chance to see it. And just trip of a lifetime, our 25th anniversary, my son turned 21. It was mm -hmm. a great trip. It, if you have never been, it's really worth the time, the effort, just try to get there. It's incredible. And I'll tell you, they are super tuned in to so many things related to climate change. Because on our way from Anchorage to Homer to go fishing, we drove through thousands and thousands of acres that had been burned up in a huge brush fire in 2017. And it's all just dead wood standing. Really scary. It really sort of puts it in your face. I was there in 2017. The swan we saw, fire. We saw the fires. It was uh, amazing. It was very, very scary, but also really amazing. And so it's, it's not growing. Nothing's growing. Well, I mean, the little grasses are starting to grow. That's that's the kind of thing. It's not like they replanted. It's just too vast of a space. It was also really interesting. We flew Alaska Airlines back. Gas price that we were able to get. Um, they're no longer using plastic on their plane. They're using paper cups. They're using recyclable materials. And look, you know, some people will argue that's nothing. That's not going to change the world. Other people might say that's one little step. Um, and we saw lots of people were very tuned into climate change because their lives depend on the climate. So. I work All in Alaska. Alaska on the climate. Sorry? All of our lives depend on the climate. Yeah, they were they even weren't even if we're not farmers, we have to eat. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And yeah, we're gonna start seeing that. What are they using any solar in Alaska? 
Yes, they do. They use some, but it's not nearly as bright as here. Mm -hmm. Well, Even they, on that's state based state on state a 10-day weather sample. It, they have much longer, you know, days during the summer. Yeah. So it actually, it, it is, it works in the summertime. It doesn't work, obviously, in the winter. Yeah, in the winter, it, it's pretty much all dark. Yeah. You know, a lot of my work, actually, over the last 10 years has been in Alaska. And uh, I'll just tell you one little anecdote. I um, need to um, regularly interview people who are the beneficiaries of a certain program that I'm evaluating. And one of the native um, Alaskans that I spoke to, I I was talking to her in the middle of COVID and she was, you know, and then I turned the conversation to climate change and she just got really quiet. And she said, oh, climate change? Are we still talking about climate change? We are living through total system collapse. Total system collapse, right? Alaska is the, the bellwether for the rest, right? Because everything happens there sooner, faster. The warming is four and a half degrees Celsius. We only have less than one. So they're having everything on steroids, what we're gonna get. It's just coming south later. We're living through total system collapse, right? We have still time to get to that level and what I'm saying is we're behind already, given what's happening. I would really encourage us to get with the program and plan for these more extreme events. They're going to come. There's no debate in the scientific community. Why we're having conversations about plastic in the middle of this, I'm sorry, that, that makes no sense to me. I know that's an important piece, and it is nothing compared to what we're going to see coming. I want us to make this town safer than it is right now. Any suggestions? Yeah, I think the part of it is, you know, educating the community, engaging the community, visioning what we want this town to be, what it looks like, mm -hmm. and then coming up with a plan that is the before the disaster, the during the disaster, and the after the disaster, mm -hmm. so that we become more resilient over time, bounce back faster, because mm -hmm. the events will occur. Yeah. They will just simply occur, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's upstream from us or wherever we're going to be affected. Stuff that happens far away, like the, the smoke in Canada, it's going to it's from here right? right so we're we're not immune from any of this and i want us to take a comprehensive look at each of the the types of events that we're likely to experience here you know look who is most vulnerable what is our plan for the people who like you know i love the in the little thing from the town for the people who camping by the river get out of there <laughs> it's like lucky. Yeah. that's the best we have right now right to just and we didn't have it 2 years ago well, so that's an improvement. And, you know, like there are people who are in much less good condition to pay the air conditioning constantly that we need. What do we do for the poorest people? Like that that's what I want to, that's the kind of stuff that I think we need to talk about. Yeah, but well, let me just throw this. Um, UMass has gone through a crazy experience. Every parking lot at UMass, they have to put a building. So I believe the Enrollment at UMass is up to 32,000, I believe. So you have this expansion of UMass, then you have the urban sprawl that's hitting Hadley, Hadfield, Belchertown. So part of it we have no control of when the state increases UMass's size by 50% compared to when I was there decades ago. I totally hear you. And that's partly what is adaptation, right? That you respond to and deal with the change that is coming, even if you don't have control over it. With most of climate change, we could do everything in this town to reduce our emissions by 100% next year. If we, I mean, I'm crazy, right? But we could do that. And still, the global climate is going to change because not everyone is doing that. And we're going to see impacts. So we have to do that side of the climate equation, too if we want to stay safe. And and so I just feel like, you know, you need education, we the need planning, plan. the assessment of what are our greatest risks, who is most at risk, what are we going to do for people who can't help themselves, that's kind of stuff. And to come together around it, because, you know, in the end, like yesterday when I heard the stuff from Dave about he lost his whole crop, whatever, I was so proud that I'm part of the CSA, right? Because that's actually making his livelihood not a total disaster this year. Still, he is going to, you know, lose hugely, but at least he can feed his children because he has a model of how to support his operation. So that's the kind of stuff that, you know, I feel like 
can we think through it together of how we help each other out when crap hits the fan? That's, you know, it's not just a government thing. So, in mentioning um, education, I triggered something from our last meeting, and Kelly usually takes such excellent minutes. I know it's a <laughs> this past meeting, there were no minutes. So, I wanted I to ask okay. the question if I heard what I thought I heard, and correct me if I'm sure. wrong. Um, that Representative Mindy Dumb said that we need to create funds for teachers to learn about climate climate science and teach students K through twelve. Uh, students have co have eco anxiety, feeling helpless and hopeless due to climate crisis. Looking for funding to empower and teach the teachers how what to educate about climate crises. Uh, students are traumatized over climate crises. I asked a question. I asked if this would be objective training, and the response was no, very subjective. And I was going to ask, what does that mean? I took notes on that too. What I understood her to mean is that the state is not going to tell anybody what they have to teach, but make resources available to the teachers that mm -hmm. if they want to teach and they are needing resources to do it, get the right, you know, materials, whatever. But as they have would be specifically um, it, it, earmarking or, or wanting to start eco training K through 12, have the teachers teach them about the climate crises. It, it's just to basically give them resources if they want to, that they have money to do it. That's that what I understood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we have yeah, yeah. yeah. so, I, I, I didn't, like yeah. I said, I didn't want to interrupt her. It, right. It's yeah. already in the eighth grade standards. I teach about climate change because I teach the state standards. And I don't argue the standards or things like that. I just teach the state standards because that's my charge and my students need to pass the MCAS in order to actually get their high school diploma. So here it is, the current state standards. Human activities have altered the biosphere. So this is currently the law for science teachers in Massachusetts. Uh, altered the biosphere, sometimes damaging it, Although changes to environments can have different impacts for different living things, activities and technologies can be engineered to reduce people's impact on Earth. That is currently the state standard around climate change now. But that's just eighth graders. Eighth graders. And I can give you the pre K to two, I can give you the three to five, and I can give you the nine to ten. I'm just reading the ones that I teach. But in from grades three to five, teachers are responsible in teaching that societal activities can protect the Earth's resources and environment. For pre K to two, things people do can infect the environment, but they can make choices to reduce their impact. And for grades nine to 10, sustainability of human societies and the biodiversity um, that supports them require responsible management of natural resources. So this is being taught K through 12. It's, it's probably online, right? Pardon? All of these benchmarks. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all state. Okay. Well, I, these are based on Ed Reform Act of 1993. Right. Mm -hmm. It's been around for 30 years. Yeah. That's currently happening. And what, you know, I can't presume to speak for a state representative, but I think she's just trying to get stuff together so people aren't, so like she you have to start from scratch. I need to have to resources. Right. I wrote right. down, it's for professional development for teachers, for materials and for curriculum. Right. So it's basically just offering them resources mm. and you know helping them, like, how do I do that? Like okay. I, I was but, telling the story back then about, I, I train teachers in how to deal with the climate anxiety that, that students experience, that would be a kind of professional development. It's not telling them, and thou shalt do this, or mm -hmm. this is good and this is bad in terms of solutions. It's but just giving them I guess education. What I'm curious it. to hear from you is, um, you seem to have an objection. No, I, I don't oh. want to be accurate. I take copious notes. Okay, okay, so you don't have, you don't have a problem with I, teaching kids about I want, things. you know what, sometimes I want to make certain what I think I heard is what I heard. Right. Okay. How's that sound? Okay, I just want to make sure that, that we weren't um, talking about that kids shouldn't learn. Stuff. No, no, no. Know about the geoengineering that's going on? Has anybody looked into that? 
problem. Which geoengineering pod problem are you the referring to? The chemtrails and all that stuff that they're spraying in the skies to dim the solar rays? Um, it's not happening right now. Excuse me? Chemtrails chem is something that happens something. because of flying, which we all do. So, yes. Not contrails. Chemtrails. Chemtrails happen all the time. Look up in the sky. Look up. Just look up. This one. Tic tac toe. Right. And that's then that's it gets coming out of the jet. And they're spraying aluminum and, and plastic nanoparticles. There's nothing but um, but pilot. And why are they doing that, in your opinion? They're doing it to dim the solar rays to cool right. the planet. There's okay. no this is global so effort going doing on. that yet. You might want to. There's just no. Me? It's not happening yet. It's not happening yet. Yeah, there's, there's been it's some global. discussion. You might want to watch the movie The Dimming on YouTube. Yeah. Everybody in this room should watch it. And is that a movie or a factual? It's a documentary. Okay. Like, who's paying for that? It seems that be incredibly expensive. Our government. Okay. There is, it's just not happening yet. I'm sorry. It's not happening. Yeah, it's going to happen. Or it is. There is a happen. serious conversation going on. It's been happening for decades. It may happen. But there have been people who've been talking about chemtrails before it was being. So it's a conspiracy at, theory. Attributed to, to a fight in global warming. They said people who were talking about chemtrails were saying that people were just spraying it up there to make people sick on purpose. Um, and that killing went, the bees too. And that went on for uh, a decade. And now I hear that it's uh, the chemtrails are there to to dim the sun, which uh, so anyway, people ought to really check their news sources out. Let 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 me based on that. Michael Moore, who I believe you've probably heard of, the um, Roger and me, had a very interesting um, about an hour and a half movie, The Planet of the Humans. Where he's questioning the um, the green movement. Very interesting. It's worth watching. And that's all I'll say. Because um, anyway, can we move? Well, I wanna, yeah, like, one last but, question. I yeah, yeah. One last question. Yeah. Um, just for clarification, is um, wanting students to be climate activists. What does that mean? Like at least that they come here. What I remember yeah. her talking about was that, you know, given the despair and the lack of hope that a lot of kids experience, right. that showing them that there are things one can do mm. without necessarily telling them here is what you must do, but simply that there are things that can be done feel that makes them feel better. And it's a way but to they're not going to be like laying across the highway to stop traffic or that kind of Or throwing climate. tomato sauce on a Monet. Okay. No, it's, it's that they could set up textile recycling at their school so, or they could okay. have well, composting the, the well, lunchtime school. So For example, that they can contribute to that, just the Hadley National Honor Society joined us for a Hadley cleanup day. They are climate activists. Right. Okay. There you being, go. Being okay. active to help. You know, they're trying to make a difference. Children. So who's scaring the children? Who's scaring the children? Who's scaring the children? I mean, just look the outside. World, just be in the world. It's amazing what's happening. So to I teach eighth graders full time. I have for almost 30 years now. Yeah. And it is just unbelievable with the anxiety that I see the really? kids coming into school with. It is stunning. It is absolutely stunning. So the news is scaring the children? It's, I didn't yes. say the news. I mean, reality is scaring the children. Yeah, experiencing it. You know, they see the, the, the smoke in the sky and the fact that they have to stay in I, the like, you know what? I, I know you guys don't think that global warming is really going on. It probably, yeah, I, I believe it is going on. Okay. But there's but, somebody doing it to us. And who is that? Well, why don't you watch the documentary? So our everyday is global, activities okay. don't have But I mean, just for a second, just for a second, yeah. okay. I, I, a lot, I, am I being accurate when I say that you're not sure that humans are causing global warming? Is that? Yeah, humans are doing it. Yeah. Is that, am I, do you there, think that? There, there, is, there is fluctuations in the weather okay. that is influenced by population, um, smokestacks in China, other factors, uh, plastics, uh, like the 
plastics that or the trash that we China pays to take and then dumps it in the Pacific Ocean. There's there's human factors that are affecting the weather. I agree completely. Okay. And how about you, Mr. Devine? What about that? Do, do, do you feel like human activity is impacting our weather? Absolutely. Okay. But, but okay. as, as, okay. the, world, just, as the world population is so that, is that, that like 8 human? billion, what's that? The world population, I believe, is around 8 billion people. Yep. So the more people you have, the more resources that are consumed. We're also continuing to, you know, to produce fossil fuels, which is what's causing, you know, every time you need to dredge, I drill for fossil fuels, we're bringing that carbon that was meant to really be in the ground into the atmosphere. Um, it's been a wonderful innovation, you know, when you think about like, what we've gotten from producing oil and gas but it's actually been to our now it's catching up with us ever since the industrial revolution we've we've basically created a problem for ourselves which is warming the planet when creating this climate crisis so well and it's so polluting like around new orleans where all these big oil refineries are it's just horrible to the environment yeah but let me say this and i i agree but i disagree but has the has plastic increased our standard of living has oil increased well, our standard saying, of living it, 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 I, I, I would not i would not discount the fact that it is an amazing innovation that we have all you know benefited from on some levels but it's also created problems. Americans major. are very wasteful. I, yes. I'll say that. Made us like Completely. a throwaway society. I agree. Yeah, we're going to stop doing You were talking we about have to. Classic. Yeah. You know, there's no way that the farmers, you know, myself as a farmer, you know, if my business didn't have plastics, people would be wasting three quarters of the food that I produce. No, no doubt about it. Um, so the problem is that all these benefits that we've been taking are have to pay the price now. We've been paying the price all, the way. and the price is coming due now. And um, and you know, I just want Carol. I just want to roll back to an earlier point because again, I spend a lot of my time with about a hundred eighth graders every day. You know, on summer vacation now, but toward the end of the year, they were during weather alerts. Don't go outside because the smoke coming down from Canada is unbelievable. Or they were chatting me comments saying, Mr. C, have you seen the sky? It's yellow. What's going on? So who's creating this anxiety? What, what's that? It was yellow here. I yes. guess it just yeah. got yellow. Yes. Yeah. We had a really, bad, bad. Bad. really bad. You didn't notice any of this no. the clouds from any of no. the I did Canadian. Not. Oh, my no, God. Look at it in the distance. It was like okay. yeah. it was horrible. I just want to. You know, I, I would love us if if this committee could be science based um, and I want to just read you the first statement in the IPCC most recent assessment, which is human activities principally through emissions of greenhouse gases have unequivocally, which is defined as 99% certainty, have unequivocally caused global warming with global surface temperatures reaching 1.1 degrees Celsius above the 1850 to 1900 average. Um, over the decade of 2011 to 2020. Um, global greenhouse gas emissions have continued to increase with unequal, unequal historical and ongoing contributions arising from, from unsustainable energy use, land use, and land use change, lifestyles and patterns of consumption and production across regions, between and within countries, and among individuals. And the confidence level is high confidence. So anyway, the, the point of this is, we have since 1988 studied this and we have systematically tested every single alternative explanation volcanoes aerosols probably contrails like chemtrails not contrails whatever sorry big difference I, it's not my first language so I'm, i apologize for using the sent wrong 
for it. But in any case, people have used every single alternative explanation and tried to model, can we replicate the current observed climate, not mock climate, can we mm -hmm. replicate it by taking human emissions out, by putting them back in, by using one or the other. Right. And the only thing that explains it unequivocally is the human emissions through energy use, transportation, you know, whatever, all these Burning the fossil fuels. And not what you're saying. And if they stop the chemtrails tomorrow globally, because it's everywhere in every country, okay, then this planet would heal itself. So are you so, saying that every government in the world is yes, doing this? Yes, they are. You know what Watch I would love? Movie. If the world could come together to do that, to harm their citizens, I would I would love for us to be that coordinated. That we would solve the damn problem. Unfortunately, I know you may think that is not the case. But if you watch the movie, but did you I'm sorry, know, I'm just so not believing your sources. Yes, not I read all the like, stuff on your side, verify. and then I read all the stuff on this side, so I have both sides. Hey, Carol, coming. Carol, I, just I really take exception to you making a judgment saying you're making fun of me and you coming up with that value. You don't have the right to do that. That's not fair. You can have an opinion about that, but she's, don't you dare. We've been working together for years and years. And kidding. I know Susie is the most legitimate person that I have ever I met. And she just told me that I'm crazy about chemtrails. I did not say she that, but I do not crazy. believe you are twist the words. It's simply not. I mean, the, if you're living in, the, in a fact-based reality, that is not a fact. It is. And well, so we have to disagree to on that. Source. But I'm, I'm, yeah, can we get back? To yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Objection to the fact that we're taking up so much time with something that's not fair. Yeah, I guess that's what I was getting at. If you um, guys can just like imagine for a second that just maybe, just maybe, there's a chance. And if that chance were true, just maybe you're wrong. And if you are wrong, just think about that for a second. And we do absolutely nothing. And the shit comes down. And it already does. And it's so already long. coming down. Then that's not right. My point is, right, this is wonderful to see um, the need of education and the need of fighting uh, misleading right. education. Yeah, she saw a movie and that movie moved her. And that she really had that movie engraved in her. So that's where we really need. Is there a way of us to coming across this information and educate people? Even like Kathleen, people... I would love for you to be right. Unfortunately, I've spent 20 years on communication and I'm giving up basically on it because we have gotten to a point of being so polarized, we're so values based that yeah, we can't right. even have the conversation and people are not taking in information when it it turns out it threatens who they are as a person. But would you say that the accept. first step in the plan that we want to do is education? Yes. It's the first one. So I, I, not I, changing people's minds. We no, just need like, a safety plan. Basically. I think we need to start from a common shared understanding of what's happening, you know, and for the conversation about adaptation, we don't really need people to believe in whatever I causes agree. the issue, yeah. right? Yep. Yeah. We can start out with, here's what's already happening. Yeah. Here's how this, this is outside the historical norm and we're not prepared for it. Our houses are not built for it. Our agriculture is not adap adapted to it and so on and so forth. And then we can start planning and we should have a time horizon of at least 50 years out, right? A couple of mortgage cycles, you know, farm investments. Mm -hmm. I mean, th those kinds of things, right? So that we can have make better informed decisions and and be prepared for the extremes that we're now experiencing. So I think that's possible. You know, inviting a si series of speakers on that, not just to our group, but to I don't know. You know, thinking about can we have a, a series of events in in the senior center where people can come and learn about it? Tom, I think you started saying something. I was going to say, but that's fine. But in this country, I'd like, I hate to say this, I feel the, the government um, works on money rather than common sense. Something like styrofoam. They've talked about how bad styrofoam is, styrofoam cups. 
which are easily replaced with a cardboard cup. But it, but there has been no real progress in that, even though styrofoam is just filling up the landfill dump. That, that's not really true, though. There styrofoam been, is... Uh, is In Hadley, you're not allowed to use, have styrofoam. The schools okay. can't use styrofoam. Okay. Can't serve some it. Some have to do more they good. Face it good. Paper. How, how about toner cartridges? I know everybody here uses a toner cartridge. It's a disgrace. They don't last because the sizes don't match. They often get thrown away. So something, a common um, consumer item, like a toner cartridge, and I'm guilty of it. You know, I try to bring them back to staples, but what do they do? Throw they, them away? They, I don't know. No, no, no. They actually do recycle them. Well, they're yeah. sent off to a recycling. But I also if, think that's a little bit of a, you know, we're, we're trying to change like an entire industry here. And what I'm suggesting is we're doing something that we can control, which is how we work together, what, how we plan, how we prepare for these events here in town. Right. So we, as a committee, as a public committee in this, um, this evening session, give us a couple of concrete ideas. How do we begin? I know you had suggested meeting with Mike and talk about emergency management. That's a concrete idea. Do you think at that meeting we should also invite Representative Kerry and Senator Comfort to be out later. Later. Okay. Can we yep. have a series of of you know open public meetings here in the senior center, like one a month, where sure. people can come and learn about you know what can we do for health, what's happening to health, what can we do for farming, mm -hmm. you know whatever, just to kind of get the conversation going, having it be facilitated as a conversation so people can raise the issues. Um, so we're not going into causal conversations. We're literally talking about what's happening, what are we seeing, what do, what do we need to do? Do we have cooling centers in town right yes. now? Yes, in the here, elementary school. Here in the and elementary which one? school? Which one? The elementary school. In which is in the floodplain, by the way. <laughs> which, you know, that every single that first flood? responder has their building in the floodplain and the cooling center. But did that area flood at this time? Not this time, no. But, you know, we were like three feet from topping the... Yeah, but when was the last time it flooded? 1938? I don't... I haven't lived there, so I don't remember. There was the, the floods that my father speaks about, 1936, 1938. He went to the town hall. You know, so if... You know, we, we don't live in utopia. You know, it's not a perfect world. Um, you know, you, you try to do the right thing. But we should invite some people from Vermont after the cleanup, mm. kind of see what they're thinking. Of, there were what farmers they wish in Hadley that went through the two floods. Yeah, um, I'm just thinking. My grandfather in terms of, went through you know, the flood. I, I've seen it happen before where um, people invited those who had just experienced uh, an event and just to learn, like, what do you wish you had mm. done before? that you now know you should have done. <laughs> like, really, we should invite them. Yeah, yeah, that's what we need to hear because. In, yeah, educational. Yeah. Hey, was your father on East Street? Or was the farm? Or was it over my here on Middle Street? My grandfather was on Middle Street. Okay. And the property was on Middle Street and West Street. And, South or North of Route 9. And I love that idea of inviting people who have just lived this. Ten because I think we don't have enough time to keep talking about this for years and years. I know we started hearing some of the conversations about levies. Maybe five years, maybe six years, maybe eight years. There's going to have to be a bond issue because levies are phenomenally expensive. And in the meantime, if we get hit with a terrible flood, everything is lost. So, you know, I realize that there's a grand plan and you might be, oh, you might have access to this grand plan or maybe there's not a municipal vulnerability plan for Hadley or whatever. But I wonder how we can get that accelerated, how we can move things along with that. I've been meeting with uh, Richard Niles, I yeah. believe, uh, many months ago. Maybe yeah, it was ago. The and the discussion yeah. of the dams and the dams not communicating with one another. Well, he didn't know. He did not know if the dams do or don't okay. communicate. All right. I seem to think he didn't think they communicated. And I think that would be one heck of a great topic for this committee to sink their teeth into. What do you I agree. Let's go in there. I agree. 
I mean, there, people are running around accusing yeah. the dams of not right. coordinating, and I think we ought to find out whether yeah. they are or not. Yeah. My guess is that they did a pretty damn good job, no pun intended, this last time running. Right. But let's find out, because yeah. if they're not, they sure as hell should be. So, yeah. Communicating. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So all the more reason to circle back to Mike's bank table, our fire chief, and say, hey, what do you know about this? Because he very well may know yeah. that they do. Right, right. I, and we'll just get the answer one way or the other. Right, right. And yeah. at that same meeting, we talked about the silver jackets doing mm -hmm. a walkthrough at yeah. the dike and was going to provide a report right. shortly thereafter. Right. Which didn't. Just, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was update. a very good meeting. You got an update got from it. the town manager yeah. about yeah. that they're still waiting for they're some still study to come right. away with. Yeah. Yeah. There really yeah. wasn't yeah. any. There wasn't any update possible. Yeah. Yeah. But. In terms of an action plan, I think that would be an excellent topic for this committee to sink their teeth into and figure out how you can facilitate the dams communicating with each other prior well, to the weather find forecast. Whether, let's find out whether they're doing it or not. Right. Okay. Because my guess is that they they probably are. You think they are? Yeah. I I think from that meeting it wasn't no. Well, his guess is your guess. They're both different. Let's continue. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a guess. But but agreed upon to agreed upon. You're both guessing, and now we're going. Forward. Okay, but to follow up on that is what. But I do think yeah. Mike Spank Dable is probably the local expert yeah, on this because as the fire chief, and we'll find this. out who does know. Any meetings or whatever. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and then moving after the suggestions of education, uh, the next step that you were suggesting, how we how we get to that step. Well, I think we could. Come up with a plan, like you know, of of a sort of a, a logical sequence of of topics, and just line them up, and you know, see if we can't over the course of a year get this conversation going. Yeah, and Susie, I think you're a good person to help us set that up, and I know you're busy up to the eyeballs, but helping us see the because you're more involved, help us see the direction to go in this sequence it takes. So. Perhaps you can put something yeah, simple together for us to look at. I can, I think I can that do it great. for the next meeting. I can yeah. put it together. That would be yeah. wonderful. Well, and for the next meeting, let me see if Mike can join us. Perfect. Just for clarity. Just for clarity, but even more than just clarity, because right now we have this awful tennis match. Uh, is it under control or is it completely out of control? I have a feeling it's probably more control than... Mm -hmm. But let's have some. No, yeah. you know, let's find out. I would hope that if it there's was, 13 dams and yeah. major flood is coming, they work together. We hope. But we don't know. We don't know. So we, we're going so to find started. out. We're going to find out how to find the answer. Okay. Right. Okay. Next. That's a great place to begin. Is, is Spengo going to know, or do we need to talk to some of these dams? Well, start with him. Start with him and see if he has somebody he wants to bring with him from the dam committee. I'm going to miss that meeting. Damn it. <laughs> what? It'll be recorded. And will it oh, August 10th? Here here? August 10th. Okay. August 10th. August 10th. Um, and Susie, for the next time we gather together, August 10th, um, can you start brainstorming? Can we all start brainstorming? Who else? Where are the concerns? What else do people want to hear? I think it should be very local. My house, my farm, my my, 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 because that really, it means about me. It's not about the world. It's about me. Well, it, but there's space. a level in between, and that is the community. I, yeah. You know, it's, yes, me, but people also in crises tend to take care of each other. And I would love it if we could shape the conversation in a way that fosters that, as opposed to just the right, me, Because me not thinking. everybody owns necessarily... House and land. Yeah, I just see house. that we're dependent on each other, you know. Well, and even here, you know, look at what's happened this last week. The poor farmers who have land or are renting land on Aquavita Road, everything's lost. Other people, if you have land on Mount Warner, you're fine so far. But again, I'm freaked out what's going to happen over the next three hours with this um, storm that's going to hit us tonight. I hope it's not hail because I'll shred the tobacco and everything is lost. And so much for that. Well, it sounds investment. like earlier we should hear from the farmers. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that idea of inviting some people who suffered this time 
what would they do differently? Those are That's ideas idea. I would really like to hear. Yeah. I need to I'll, I'll come back with the, the school. And you were talking about the children, the teachers at the school. Well, they are they they yeah. are really the children, I'm so sorry, but the children are the one is go and tell their parents, we need to change. Right. I know this. Summer. They they but you know, I, I would be careful to not overburden the children with information about really um, yeah. traumatic events. Yeah. Um, so, I, but the teachers, they're, you know, as we heard earlier, they're already uh, pretty anxious. So I would say this is an adult conversation yeah. and um, the children need to see that, that the adults are taking care of them, mm -hmm. which is, yeah. as studies are showing us, it's the number one thing that increases the distress. And it's that's actually trail and not being taken care. That's of. a really good preview for our August meeting because the student who was volunteering to help us, she just can't. She can't. She's going to be a senior this year. She has other things going on, um, but they have put it out to other students if somebody's interested and available and joining us because we have a school representative, which is really important yes. to have this conversation. That's why signs like this that make a little difference, you know. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I think we're working on two two different levels. The one is, here I am a small person, and what can I personally do? And then we're looking at a problem of how do we as a community look at the options here for what's happening? Mm -hmm. I feel like I've done something because I recycled or I composted yeah. or whatever. But I also know that I need to know this other stuff. And I'm not saying this. Yeah, yeah. But it's kind of nice to know that now we have our ticket in on the Green Community Grant. Yeah. Now where they have a whole collection of um, energy involved grants, maybe there's something else that can help this town. And maybe we can look at those as yeah. well. Um, but that is a pretty brilliant idea for some sort of speaker series and getting people involved. Um, that's pretty forward looking to have the folks who were just pummeled by these rains in Vermont. We can ask the people from, you know, from, from the North Hampton. Hampton. North Hampton. Yeah, Mount Houston. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's a farmer. Yeah, they don't yeah. have any food from that yeah. over. Yeah, and they grow up with North Hampton was destroyed. No, 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 but that, don't that's good. The context. Yeah, it, and I'll tell you, um, I took a training yeah, class at UMass a few years ago. Is this a See, thing on climate change, but more? Um, it really gave me a basis to teach me. That's how I learned how to do it. And I don't know have all the answers. You know, this is going to be right. We're taking thanks. Um, Tom, any other thoughts? Anybody else with any other thoughts? You're and, asking and, question. How do we get information about what other grants are available that we are green community? So Joanna, who had originally emailed Amy, who yeah. might have who costed the, a lot. She's the chair. She's yeah, she passed. Joanna is um she's the boss lady okay. there. And she would know I think she's the big boss, okay. but I think she would know of things that work for Hadley. The other person is through Pioneer Valley Planning yeah. Commission, Mimi. Bring it local, right? It's local where it matters. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. yeah. And, and then so. Are you, I think are you are the DSO? I am. Oh, wonderful. Oh, that's great. It's great to have Now that I'm not chair, I can have time to be oh, really sure. sure. No, Amy's right. Amy Parsons. Well, you folks rotate every year, oh, I didn't right? Know that. Theoretically. <laughs> okay. Interesting. I have your voice here. Parsons was chair. Yeah, I did not decide. It happens in the first meeting after the elections. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it rotates. Uh, very good. It, not yeah. always. Not always, but yes, it has traditionally. And Randy was with us for a meeting or two just because he was sort of covering as Amy's role was shifting oh, and then some. Oh, okay. Yeah. And honestly, I'm familiar with contrails. 
Because where, I need where are the condensation trails? Con trails. That's where the name comes from. I'm it's less familiar with the trails. The con trail. Is that something you know about? Some kind of I've heard of them, yes. Okay. It sounds like what you're saying is that just in happening there are minute particles of, I don't know what, things besides the condensation that we see in the contrails being exuded. Deliberately. Deliberately. She said aluminum particles and plastic also. Microplastics, right, right. Nano. Being sprayed into so, that. So, so it's, we can, somebody can look at this video. I'm going to check it out. I'm, I already started looking at it. Um, we're still being recorded. Do you want to close the meeting? or you? Yeah, let, let's close yeah. the meeting up. I, I second Thank that. Thank you.